This is a short film about the global challenge, global warming with an angling on the mountain of the poles. In this film we will talk about the issue global warming with extra focus on the melting of the poles, what we can do to help solve the challenge, what is being done and the NGO's role in this. It is necessary for us humans that we understand the relationship between the environment and the development of the emissions of CO2 in order for us to make sustainable decisions. What is happening? The temperature has risen and continues to rise due to the large carbon dioxide emissions caused by humans. By the year 2100, the average temperature in the world will rise with 4.4 degrees. As a result of high temperature, the ice will melt. The water will rise and the ice melts and the warmer the water, the more water will expand and this will lead to more drought in desert areas. Ice at the Arctic is also disappearing quickly. By 2040, the region may have the first completely ice-free summer. Glaciers and mountain snow is increasingly melting. For instance, the Glacier National Park at Montana now has 27 glaciers, which is a huge difference from the 150 it used to possess to in 1910. 90% of the warmest years since the 1800s have been after the year 2000. Antarctica and Greenland are strongly affected by temperature increase. Polar bears and seals are endangered species because of this situation. Polar bears get a smaller habitat as the ice melts around and this affects its access to food. The seals and other species share the same problems as polar bears. And if they die in these areas, two large species will be gone forever and will never come back. So what can we do? On one hand, it would be a good idea that each country, if they are able to, avail themselves of their own resources. If we can manage to cut down on the importations and exportations of goods, we could manage to cut the emissions of carbon dioxide. On the other hand, the amount of work and resources that would go into making this effort is huge. Today, there are millions of established businesses around the world. For the Western countries, it pays off to move our businesses abroad. Because of our high wages and demands, it has become much more attractive to establish, for example, clothes factories to developing countries where the requirements are much lower. Even though the situation mentioned above is complicated to change, there are some things each individual can do. Since the people in the Western world contribute the most to global warming by throwing their reusable things, we should recycle and reuse our things. This will cut the emissions of CO2 just as if we use more public transport or electrical cars. Another trend and thing that will make a big change to the emissions of CO2 is the use of renewable energy sources such as solar panels that capture sunlight, windmills that capture wind and water mills that capture the energy in the water. We can all agree on that these solutions sound like good ideas and very possible to develop. The only disadvantages with these are the large amount of money it costs to realize these measures, and that we will have to gradually rebuild the way we recover the energy. And what is being done? Even though there are both positive and negative aspects and most ways to solve the challenge global warming, a positive thing is that most of the possible solutions mentioned above are being practiced at different levels. The windmill is becoming more and more popular as a source of renewable energy, Denmark and Holland are good examples of this. So is the recycling and reuse trend, the electrical and hybrid cars, and the public transport option. Most households in the Western world have dustbins that separate the different wastes. The purchases of hybrid and electrical car is increasing. And how do NGOs play a role in this? There is no secret that the NGOs have a huge influence in tackling this challenge. The number of different organizations are endless and even more are founded every day. Because these organizations aren't reliant on the government, it allows them to expand both in the country it is founded in and in the rest of the world. Some of the NGOs focus specifically on certain aspects of global warming, while others focus on the general aspect of global warming. One of the main focuses when we talk about the water rising are the animals that are reliant on the ice for their survival. NGOs that cover this aspect of global warming are, for example, the Wildlife Conservation Society and the Zoological Society of London. These organizations are all about animal welfare and work internationally to raise money 
and will go into the process of cutting the emissions of CO2 that will eventually lessen the melting of the ice. In this way, they can help the endangered species. The raising of money regarding emissions of CO2 is only a small part of this organization's work. Other NGOs that work against the carbon dioxide emissions are Greenpeace and the Nature Conservancy. Both organizations and many more arrange demonstrations, petitions and spread awareness in the hopes of reaching through to people. Many of these NGOs also have accounts you can send in donations to. There is still a long way to go before the results start showing, but it is clear that the work of the NGOs pays off at least when it comes to what each individual can do to improve the situation on a large scale. The biggest impact they have on the general population is spreading awareness and ideas and with this, new possibilities and hope will appear.